If you want to meet some of the people that make the Greater Hartsville Chamber of Commerce thrive, we're bringing them to you next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. Today we're in Hartsville, South Carolina, on the campus of Coker College. We're focused on the Greater Hartsville Chamber of Commerce, and we're visiting with Dave Reichert, Engineering Projects Manager with Sunoco, which is based here in Hartsville. Dave, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Good morning. morning. Thank you. Are you originally from the PD area, Dave? No, uh, I like to say I'm a rarity in that I actually moved north to go to work for Sunoco. <laughs> I'm originally from Valdosta, Georgia. Is that right? How long have you lived here in Hartsville? I've lived here for 25 years. Tell us a real quick about your responsibilities with Sunoco. Okay, I'm an engineer by training, but I supervise our testing labs and mm -hmm. our pilot plant and in my spare time do machinery development projects for manufacturing and testing equipment that we manufacture ourselves. Sunoco is based here in Hartsville. For viewers in, on the Grand Strand or up in southeastern North Carolina, Hartsville is in the uh, virtually, uh, it's on the, uh, this is Darlington County, which is all very close to the state line, uh, right. north and south Carolina state line. Right, but Sunoco's headquarters is here. Okay, and, and you talked about on the types of projects that you're particularly active with. Um, as a trained engineer, mostly the folks working at Sunoco, is it from an engineering background, or what is Sunoco's primary product? Uh, Sunoco's primary product is that we manufacture recycled paper. We also take that paper and convert it into other packaging uh, products, for instance, uh, composite cans or paper tubes for almost any use you can think of. Okay. Huh. How long have you been active with the Gr Greater Hartsville Chamber of Commerce? I've been involved with the Chamber in this Christmas and April, April project for, I think it's 13 years now. Mm, is that right? Yes. Is, is there a board of directors that oversees the Christmas and April project? Yes, there is. Actually, one of the more interesting things about this activity is the wonderful division of labor that we have among the members of the board. Mm -hmm. um, everybody just, just takes their part of this thing and runs with it. Uh, for such a casual assembly of people, they are very effective at getting this project done. Mm -hmm. Could you give the viewers a little plot summary on what is the Christmas and April committee okay. and the project? Christmas in April is a real grassroots uh, charitable activity uh, involving teams of volunteers who come together uh, one weekend in April to perform repair work on the homes of elderly people and other people who can't afford to do the repairs themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, and how many folks would be active? Uh, I guess the, the numbers of people that are helping you out in these repairs uh, would fluctuate year to year. It, it does, but uh, we have a remarkably high number of volunteers for a community this size. One year, uh, about our peak, we had 1,200 volunteers. Oh. And I would say that now that number has stabilized somewhere around 800 or so. Does the, and does the Chamber of Commerce on a direct basis help the Christmas and April project or have they just helped get it started years ago and now have stepped back? The Chamber was very instrumental in starting the program and now, uh, especially through the person of Nancy Truesdale, provides a motive force for the activity uh, and also a place for a, the board to meet. Mm -hmm. And you said at, at, at peak one year that you were up to 1,200 volunteers. That's correct. Is there a, is there a volunteer base? year-round uh, to, ke to keep active, to, if, if people uh, want to volunteer, are there ways, what would be a way someone could get in touch with you or s someone else uh, with the project if they wanted to volunteer their time or services? We always route people to the Chamber of Commerce and uh, Nancy will refer the person to the particular member of the board who handles the activity they're interested in participating in. Mm -hmm. For instance, if somebody wants to volunteer to serve on a team, um, she will refer them to me <clears throat> and I will place them with a team or find some other activity they can do. Mm -hmm. Where primarily do the volunteers come from and how are they organized? We have a wonderful cross-section of the community here. Uh, many of our teams are uh, organized mm -hmm. by churches. We have uh, local businesses will field teams, uh, such as uh, Carolina Power and Light mm -hmm. and Sunoco. Banks uh, have teams and uh, civic clubs, uh, for, such as the Rotary Club or the JCs. Mm -hmm. 
how are homes selected for inclusion in the project? It seems so exciting. Everyone would probably want a, a benefit from this. Uh, how do you all decide on which homes to? We ask applicants to go to the Chamber of Commerce and fill out an application. During the months of January and February, the members of the Christmas and April Board of Directors inspect every house that has applied, and there are usually over a hundred mm -hmm. applicants. Sure. And we consider uh, we have certain criteria that we go by. Household income is is one of the major ones. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not work on rental property except in rare circumstances, and we look for. Um, um, things such as, say, illness or age or the presence of small children in the home. We don't have really firm criteria. We have guidelines that we go by. Mm -hmm. And after these inspections, then the board gathers and we review all the applications and select the ones that meet our criteria mm -hmm. and that we think are projects we can accomplish. Does the amount of time that a team will work on a project fluctuate from house to house, or is there a pretty common time? Yes, I think one reason I was recruited to work on the board was that uh, I was the extreme as a team captain. I did serve on a team for three years before joining the board. Three years? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the last year, uh, my team worked on a house. We started working on that house the first weekend in April, and we finished the last weekend in May. And that is quite extreme for our activity. Most of our teams prefer to just work one Saturday, right. and then they're done. But uh, other teams, we don't confine ourselves to just one day. Mm -hmm. If the team is willing to work and has a project that, that needs the, uh, the dedication, they're free to work just as long as they like. Mm -hmm. Dave, where do the supplies, or where do the funds come from to buy the supplies and funds needed for each project? One thing that we are very proud of is that all our funding is private. Mm. Uh, we get some generous donations from local businesses. Uh, churches are also major uh, funders of our event. And uh, on, in certain, some years, our fundraisers have even gone into local grade school, schools and mm -hmm. conducted activities there to, uh, to raise funds. But all our funds are private. That's fantastic. What do you think the volunteers derive from this project? Uh, going on and on, I mean, I'm sure the, the feelings must be uh, uh, diverse, but at the same time, just a, a great sense of uh, excitement. Uh, the, I guess the, uh, the major feedback that I have received from teams over the years has been that I challenged them more than they wanted to be challenged, right. and, and I plead guilty to that. But in more direct answer to your question, of course, there's the obvious satisfaction from knowing that you've helped someone and, and that you've helped your community. But another thing that I don't think we think of all that often is that it allows people to go into parts of the community that they might not otherwise see. And, and it is enlightening and sobering to see that not everyone in the world lives as well as you might. Dave Reichert, 25 years here in Hartsville, <clears throat> Sunoco, many years on the board of directors for the Christmas and April project. The recognition of seeing sober faces that drive him to want to get out and help folks change their lives. Thanks so much for being with us this morning, Dave. Thank you. Stay tuned for more Carolina People coming up next. Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. Today we're in Hartsville, South Carolina on the campus of Coker College. We're focused on the Greater Hartsville Chamber of Commerce's Junior Achievement Program and we're visiting with its chairperson, Jonna Shirley. Jonna, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Good morning. Thank you, Greg. Aside from this role as, as chairwoman of the uh, Junior Achievement uh, Program, project are you also do you i understand you also have activities with mutual savings bank which That's is located right. here in hartsville i'm vice president of marketing and human resources okay. at mutual savings i've been there about eight years mm -hmm. how long is, is is this a pd area bank or a hartsville area it's a a pd area bank we have five branches in the the pd area uh we were founded in 1936 here in hartsville uh-huh F five branches where are they located uh, we have two branches here in hartsville we have a branch in Bennettsville, Darlington, and Florence. And you've been with the bank how long? Eight years. Eight years, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. What's your main responsibility as vice president? You said uh, of marketing. marketing. I okay. do marketing, uh, which involves all the advertising and the right. promotions, and then the human resources, 
with payroll and employees. Yes. Yeah, that's Very a big busy. part of our oh, job. Oh, yeah, I'm sure yeah. it is. I'm sure it is. It's so tough to meet anyone who wears just one hat these days, particularly when they're, if they can get active with charities like your mm -hmm. activity with the Junior Achievement Board, then you, the bank probably knows you have the ability to handle wear more than one hat. Well, I hope so. Very yeah. definitely. How long have you been in Hartsville, Jonna? I've been here about 20 years. Uh, uh -huh. Finished college. I, I graduated from Clemson University. Oh, right. And uh, my husband is from here, and so... Uh, I moved here when I graduated. You yeah. moved here right after graduating from Clemson? Well, I did a little stint in Charleston. Uh -huh. you know, had, right. had to decide what I wanted to do with my life. Ooh, so, yeah. yes. Well, that's. Uh, and the Junior Achievement Board, uh, in the end, has had a, a heck of a lot to do with your life. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about the uh, the, pro the It's the Junior Achievement program mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. Can you and it's uh, we actually have our board, our own board, but it's uh, an, an arm of the Chamber of Commerce. Right. And uh, it has been in existence in Hartsville since 1989. We felt like uh, we, we partnered ourselves with the uh, Junior Achievement Program of Central South Carolina. Mm. And so that's the main office that we work with, but all mm -hmm. of the folks in Hartsville are local that, that work as volunteers on the board and in the classrooms. But it's a program that we actually go into the schools and teach kids about the free enterprise system, right. about economics and uh, both personal economics and, and uh, local economics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So its main purpose is teaching about economics. Right. Uh, the career options that are open to them, um, setting a budget, whether it's in a business or a personal budget, mm -hmm. uh, teach them about saving, teamwork, uh, philanthropy, Great. all sorts of areas that you would think of in the business world, in a community. Virtually anything that deals with, with money, either raising mm -hmm. money or, or running a small or getting involved in a business sense, that's wonderful. Exactly. And this is for high school students. Well, no, it's uh, we have classes uh, in the elementary schools, Boy. junior high and senior high. Yeah, programs and, and the Junior Achievement, National Junior Achievement Program does a wonderful job of making the programs age specific right. so that the kids can understand the concepts that mm -hmm. we're trying to teach mm -hmm. them. How does the Chamber of Commerce support your efforts? Well, we uh, actually we meet in the Chamber office. Right. Uh, they help promote, but the board of the Junior Achievement actually raises the funds to be able to do the programs and we write letters to the schools um, and offer our support to do classes in the school system. Mm -hmm. Are the programs that are run through the Junior Achievement uh, program, uh, program, are they similar to programs throughout the state? And I know you said you're associated with the Central mm -hmm. Region. Mm -hmm. Are there very similar programs throughout the state or throughout the nation? They are. Uh, there are a lot of communities across the state who are fortunate, like we are, to have a, a Junior Achievement program. Uh, not every community has them, right. but, uh, but we mm -hmm. do, and, and we're real glad that we do. I understand that uh, last year a senior high school uh, a project had a particular uh, mm -hmm. a, a special project. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about that? And our high school program has been good and, and it's been very strong since 1989. Right. But this uh, past year was a, a new program called Youth Philanthropy. Mm. And uh, the students actually uh, came up with a product mm. that they developed. Um, and they, they planned it out, they marketed it, mm. they set up a budget, they had officers, oh, uh, and then with their profits, and they had to raise at least $500 with the sale of their product, mm -hmm. that with their profits, they had also interviewed different nonprofit organizations in the community, and we had a local organization that, that met their profit tenfold, so they ended up with $5,500 that they decided where the funds would be allocated. These nonprofit organizations uh, were interviewed by the students. Oh, they no. had to make um, application to this group of students. And so yeah. the kids learned uh, that they have to give back to the community, and they learned what the different nonprofits do in the community. And how did the Junior Achievement Program guide them into that? I mean, did they just kind of, uh, 
how, how does that work exactly? You all just gave them some ideas of things they could do and then they really ran with it. Well, like uh, the Junior Achievement Program actually has everything lined up. When, mm -hmm. when a teacher goes in, a volunteer goes in to teach a class, mm -hmm. uh, they have the teacher's manual, they have the student manuals, I mean, they have the guideline. It, it's pretty much dummy proof. Right. And um, you just have to be that willing body that's go, that is willing to go in to work with the kids. Right. Uh, but it was wonderful. Now, this one did require a little more research because we had to provide some of the nonprofits. Um, for the kids to see, and we worked through the United Way and some of the areas to find out those names. Mm -hmm. How large is the board, the Junior Achievement Board, uh, through the? We have about eight members. Okay, and all eight of you all are active. Mm -hmm. um, we do the fundraising and we volunteer in the classroom. That's spectacular. How frequently are the classes held? We have this year. We have 18 classes that are scheduled and. Um, in all age levels mm -hmm. and uh, the programs typically are six weeks in length so the volunteer will call the teacher and set up when they want to to begin the program mm -hmm. and uh, it takes about an hour a week out of the volunteer s schedule mm -hmm. I know we just have uh, just a, a real quick I want to ask if someone wanted to volunteer mm -hmm. to help who would they contact and, and would they need any special skill uh, no, they would just need a love for children yes. and a, a willingness to be able to get up in front of a classroom. There are usually about 30 kids, mm -hmm. um, and patience uh, is, is always a plus. But they would need to contact either the Chamber of Commerce or they could call me at the bank. What's your number, Jonna? That number is 383-3053. 843-383-3053. And you could take folks throughout the PD. Right. Okay, we would love great. to have them. Shauna Shirley, Vice President from Mutual Savings Bank here in Hartsville with branches throughout the PD, chairperson of the Junior Achievement Board. The program has been in existence for a number of years, reaching out to help kids get started at an early age. You heard education at an early ages uh, throughout through, through high school. Shauna, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Stay tuned for more Carolina People coming up next. Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. Today we're in Hartsville, South Carolina, on the campus of Coker College. We're focused on the Greater Hartsville Chamber of Commerce, and we're visiting with Ron Howard, the Director of Sales for Pepsi Cola of Florence. Ron, thanks so much for being with us this morning. You're quite welcome. Glad to be here. Are you originally from the PD area, Ron? Yes, I actually grew up here in Hartsville. This is my hometown. And you're the Director of Sales for Pepsi of Florence? I'm the director of sales over the supermarket segment of our business. Okay. I've been with Pepsi 23 years. 23 years with Pepsi? Yes. All, all of it here in the PD? All of that here in the PD area. That's amazing. Did you attend school in the area? I actually did. Um, I graduated from Hartwell High School, and about uh, 12 years later, I enrolled at Coker College in the evening program. Is that right? And uh, graduated from Coker. Do you have any family here in the area? Just about all of my family live in this immediate area. Is that right? How long have you been involved with the Greater Hartsville Chamber of Commerce? This is actually my first year serving on the Chamber Board. Uh, I've always participated in the events that they've held in the community and Pepsi-Cola has been very supportive of all the events and that's primarily how I became involved. Mm -hmm. Last week we were at the Eastern Carolina Agricultural Festival uh, Expo. Excuse me. We were focused on uh, much of that week on the Expo out there, oftentimes called the Florence County Fair. And right. there were so many events that were sponsored: the pig races, and Senior Day, and Kids Day. Amazing Pepsi's involvement. Even before that, we had uh, one of the principals of the the parent company of Pepsi of Florence. Uh, Frank Avon a couple weeks back talking about his involvement with the PD area heart walk. Right. So n not only uh, your involvement with the greater area, Hartsville Area Chamber of Commerce and particularly the golf tournament, which will be held tomorrow, that which we correct. need to talk about, but in the, uh, the Eastern Ag Expo and the PD area heart walk, I'm sure there's a heck of a lot of others, the Boys and Girls Clubs, 
uh, a heck of a lot of other involvement that uh, Pepsi uh, gets gets into, which is really a true true commitment to community, which you see with local ownership. That's wonderful. That is very true. Frankie is very strong in the community, and I would hate to know that I even had to keep up behind his schedule with all the things he's involved in. <laughs> that's right. That's <laughs> right. You are the chairman right now of the second annual Greater Hartsville Area Chamber of Com Commerce Golf Tournament, is that right? That is correct. Uh, and once again, this is my first year on the chamber board and they always like for the board members to chair an event. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would pick one of the tougher events and right. pick the golf tournament. <laughs> so, and we had eight members that served on the golf committee and we were very fortunate to have a co-sponsor, Carolina Pines Hospital. Right. They have come on board and put up a lot of money to help sponsor this event and we always let them name the beneficiary recipient of our golf tournaments. And this year, that recipient is the Boys and Girls Club of Hartsville. Right. So our goal is to raise approximately $10,000, and we will split the proceeds between the Boys and Girls Club and the Hartsville Chamber of Commerce. That's spectacular. You feel pretty good about the goal being met? I do. Uh, we have a field of about 26 teams that will be participating. And, of course, there's a lot of whole sponsorships that will be uh, funded as well. And we have some great prizes for the tournament. Uh, there will be a brand new pickup truck given away uh, by Raceway Automotive out on 151 in Hartsville. Uh, Honda has committed to a Honda ATV. Wow. And there will be uh, a lot of door prizes available from the different businesses in the area. And it's a great opportunity to come out and do some networking with your customers. Definitely. Are there other sp sponsors other than Carolina Pines Regional Medical Center? There are some smaller sponsors, but the biggest uh, sponsor of them all is Carolina Pines because they put so much uh, money into the event mm -hmm. and they use a lot of their people as well that really right. help us with the tournament. Right. It kind of takes some of that responsibility away from us, which is a good thing. Had you been involved with the golf tournament before, Ron? This is my first time with the Chamber Golf Tournament. Right. I have worked with some other golf tournaments. Uh, Florence Breakfast Optimist Club Golf Tournament mm -hmm. and Nazarene Church in Hartsville Golf Tournament. But I always enjoy that. It's a, it's a lot of work and a lot of fun. You said Carolina Pines was, was uh, determined who the recipient would be for the funds raised. And you said uh, it's always the chamber gets a portion of it, but they've determined the uh, Hartsville area Boys and Girls Club. That's correct. Uh, last year, uh, Carolina Pines selected the Red Fox Club of Hartsville, mm -hmm. and they've got they got half of the proceeds this year. They selected the Boys and Girls Club of Hartsville, which I think is an excellent candidate as well. Have you already you've had a cutoff already, Ron? As to any any new entrants being added into the field tomorrow? Actually, we have at this point in time 23 teams. We do have three spots for three more teams available. One of those was taken up uh, today at the board meeting, mm -hmm. so that actually leaves two, so we will have a full house uh, by the time we tee off at 12.30 tomorrow. I'm sure. If someone uh, wanted to rush in, if a viewer right now was watching and they, they like to go off, they knew they had the day, the morning off tomorrow, it's, uh, and it tees off at what time? 12.30. Okay. If they knew they had the afternoon off, what, what number would they want to call? They could call the chamber. 332-6401, uh, or they could call me at my office in Florence, 662-4532, extension 232, and we would certainly try to work them in. What kind of response have you gotten f from the teams in the area, the excitement, obviously, of, of playing? Actually, the response have, has been tremendous because mm -hmm. of past golf tournaments and the success that they have done with those, and it's just a matter of plugging everyone in getting teams is certainly not a problem in this golf tournament. It's actually the problem is knowing when to cut it off. I bet. That's <laughs> right. Well, uh, uh, if, if viewers are interested, they need to call right up uh, yes. right now if there's an opportunity, if there's still any foursomes available. Lastly, you talked about some of those special pri prizes available. Um, the ATV, is there's an opportunity to win an ATV out there? The first hole in one will win a Honda ATV. Mm. And also, that, that will be on hole number eight. On another hole, there will be a brand new pickup truck, once again, by, uh, given by Raceway Automotive. This will be something new this year, but there will be prizes uh, for the longest drive in four categories. 
based on handicap, A, B, and C, and D players. And there will also be four closest to the pin prizes based on, once again, handicaps of A through D, which is kind of unique for a tournament. Wonderful. Ron Howard, more than two decades with the same family-owned and operated uh, Pepsi of Florence here in the PD, director of sales. Ron, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you very much. Good My luck pleasure. on a successful golf tournament tomorrow. Thank you. Stay tuned for more Carolina People.